Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Discovering the Architecture Middle Path podcast. As usual, I'm co-hosting with this Sanjeeva. Hi Sanjeeva. Hey Asanka. So during the last episode, uh, we discussed about platform engineering uh, as well as uh, what's a modern platform. Uh, so we thought of continue that topic. Uh, recently we published an article uh, an article in VM blog. At, uh, explaining the challenges organizations are facing when they are building platforms. Um, and again, uh, we highlighted our experience in this particular subject, helping organizations as well as building our own platforms. Uh, so uh, we thought of uh, look at this from the architect's point of view, because uh, when it comes to building a platform, an uh, in-house platform, architects are um, uh, doing a vital role and they are in the middle of uh, business as well as uh, the developers. Uh, so uh, how we can um, look at this problem from the architect's point of view. Uh, so we uh, identify five key areas. There can be many, but we prioritize them and I, I, I summarize them into five buckets. Uh, the first thing uh, we would like to highlight is about um, time to market uh, because uh, when uh, the organizations uh, start building a platform, entire focus is going to that and uh, they are missing the focus to build uh, digital experiences. So I'm in a CTO club in the uh, Bay Area. And interestingly, uh, the CTOs and CIOs uh, joining this club, they are discussing uh, uh, their main focuses on platform engineering and building platforms. But unfortunately, they are not delivering the applications that business is uh, looking for. So that's a key problem. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it, as technologists, we love to create technology. Uh, the business uh, just wants the outcomes, right? They don't really need to see or they don't care whether you build it with a hammer and a, and a nail or whether you build with Kubernetes. Uh, it's not really relevant. Uh, what I want is my customer to be able to buy more or do more or whatever the thing I'm trying to deliver. So the... Uh, one one challenge that technology people, architects in particular, have is they are responsible for the platform because the platform is what defines how the rest of the business will operate. Um, and the building, the, the time it takes to build this uh, defocuses so much from what you really are trying to achieve. And then after a while, what happens is your entire energy is sucked into building uh building this thing and here you are one year later you've invested a bunch of money but the outcomes are very limited so uh, i think the the time to market um, is very important because every day you spend without delivering digital experiences that your customers will love and want to use uh, the more customers you lose right or the more business they're giving to somebody else Exactly. I think uh, the couple of uh, uh, digital uh, steering committees that uh, we are participating, uh, there are a lot of business stakeholders there and they are creative these days. They are coming up with different type of business models, new revenue modules, models, and then uh, partnerships. But uh, this uh, building a platform and then focusing on that, blocking that entire effort. Uh, so there's a lot of friction in between these two groups that we see uh, because of that uh, particular approach. Uh, the second uh, reason is basically about the completeness. Uh, I think even we spoke about shadow IT some time back. Uh, so danger of uh, uh, building a, a platform and then if it is not completed or if it is not providing the necessary capabilities for the development teams, uh, the shadow IT might come back because people will go outside the platform and start building the, uh, uh, their applications. So again, it's a big challenge and uh, uh, that that's another thing that uh, as architects we have to uh, pay attention uh. yeah the uh, <laughs> the problem with shadow it was uh, it works from the point of view of the business unit that is going and just buying something and using it 
uh, it, they get their <clears throat> they get their problem solved, right? Uh, and 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 that's how AWS took off originally was because uh, of shadow IT. I remember we had a customer in the very early days. Uh, is a financial services customer. There was no budget issue. There was no money issue. But it would take them nine months to order a computer and get it connected and have it usable as a server, right? <clears throat> and not for lack of any kind of resources, but simply process and procedure and security. And of course, AWS said, well, you know, it takes a few seconds, right? You just swipe your credit card and here's your, here's your computer. Here's an IP address. You can log into it. Uh, so e- e- the... Timing and, and the other complexity of this is really the challenge with getting everybody to do the right thing or best practices. Uh, getting best practices set up and, and adopted in a company uh, is very difficult because everybody knows what's best. Uh, everybody's a pundit, every, every, every sub part is a pundit and so forth. Um, Yet in some areas, businesses have been very successful in establishing best practices, you know, things like uh, collaboration technology. Uh, you don't have different teams going and buying different things. In some places, you will have still, you know, you have a, a Microsoft subscription or a Google subscription, yet you'll have some holdouts going and buying a Zoom account, right, and, and using it uh, because Zoom had, had such a advantage uh, for some time. Um but in general, the, there are successes in some areas, but in technology adoption and architecture, uh, getting best practices established is very difficult. So it is really important to find a way to put that together in real best practices so that uh, it's not a crippling behavior. It is not stopping others from getting things done, but uh, at the same time, it follows standards and conventions and approaches so that you don't have different parts of the business choosing one, one option versus another. Yeah, I think uh, uh, when it comes to uh, architecture, uh, like uh, there are certain uh, best practices as well as some patterns architects would like to use, right? As example, uh, microservices and then event-driven architecture. Uh, so those things should support in the platform and then not just support, as you said, uh, how uh, the best approach and what are the uh, uh, particular governance, what are the particular security standards that the, the organization should follow. All these things should be there, uh, come with the best practices as well as some some configurable manner that the uh, organization or the enterprise architecture team can enforce these uh, policies uh, when it comes to the development. So I think um, uh, that that's going to be a key uh, requirement. Then the uh, uh, the next uh, uh, challenge uh, uh, we see is the uh, it's more related to the skill gap as well. Uh, because it's not easy to build a platform. The complexity is really high. Uh, so how to find this uh, particular skill set is a challenge. And then we spoke about the uh, number of choices that we have in the CNCF landscape, AWS marketplace, uh, and all the other uh, major cloud provider marketplaces as well. So uh, uh, the, the benefit is basically how... Uh, much we can outsource and that links with the previous uh, uh, point that we mentioned the best practices because uh, uh, the if you have to build the best practices then you have to have the depth as well as particular domain knowledge to provide those best practices as well so that's where like the uh, if the, uh, the the architecture team can outsource this um, that that uh, organization can benefit a lot yeah, I, I think I think uh, people always underestimate the challenge of uh, building something, but they really, really underestimate the challenge of keeping something going. Uh, you know, keeping an infrastructure uh, set of infrastructure operating uh, in a in a rock solid way, yeah, and and evolving because nothing is ever constant, right? Do you get a new version? You know, Terraform goes away, becomes Tofu or whatever the heck it is called, right? Uh, you know, these are things that you you cannot ever stop. So every day is an ongoing challenge and an opportunity because uh, you, you get brilliant new technologies coming out every so often and you can't just say, well, we pick something up 
five years ago. So we are not moving. That's not classical either, right? Yeah. Uh, and the complexity of that uh, and the mind contribution it takes away from a business which is trying to do the retail experiences or in insurance or whatever the manufacturing, whatever the domain that the business is in, shouldn't be putting all this effort into figuring out, okay, do we have to go from tofu to this or to something else to, uh, you know, the alternative, the best kind of uh, CI technologies that are around, all the observability infrastructures that are around, all these things that you need to make decisions about. Um, you, you should just say, you know what, it's not my problem. I need this damn thing to work. I need a certain level of uh, capabilities. And as technology evolves, I want it to become better as well. Right? And we do that today comfortably. Again, I'm going to use collaboration as an example. Uh, you know, spam detection, antivirus, all this stuff is a constant war. If you ever, if you ever run an email infrastructure, uh, keeping a step ahead of all the guys who are attacking you is a massive fight. But we don't even think about it anymore, right? You just subscribe to some service uh, and you're done. And you don't think twice about it and it just works. Uh, and and but underneath those you know the people who are setting up and operating this infrastructure are uh, firefighting and you know world war fighting every day there underneath. Uh, so that's what you want to get to. So outsource all of that complexity and say you know what, I just want to focus on building value for the business. Exactly. Uh, I think the the uh, the uh, platform or the underneath platform doesn't provide any differentiator for the organization, right? Yeah. The things that you built on top of the platform is uh, creating the differentiators. I think we spoke about this uh, during our conversation about abstractions that we call them as the business abstractions. So that's where I think uh, as architects, we need to pay more attention and then uh, focus on designing uh, business abstractions, building the business abstractions and keep on delivering it and then go through that particular cycle, take the feedback and have a more iterative approach. Uh, so I think uh, uh, to do that, uh, uh, outsourcing that particular task uh, into a different team is really, really important. So moving to the next uh, point, uh, I think there's a trend happening uh, with the smaller teams with uh, more productivity. I think two pizza teams are leaning towards to one pizza teams with the current trend. Uh, so, but uh, unfortunately, like if uh, an organization trying to build a platform, uh, it becomes a larger team. Uh, so uh, uh, we will not have that lean approach. And we spoke about the complexity of platform engineering during last episode as well. Uh, so in case if we start building the platform, then we will get into that trap yeah i think the the you know we, even in ws we've experienced this right we we increased our team size quite a bit i think we uh, our only team we went up to 440 people and then we realized okay we have 440 people but we're not doing a whole lot more than when we had 350 people or something like that right uh, because the size gets in the way after some time um, so lean team, and it's not just a financial saving statement because obviously if you have fewer people, you spend less money. But more importantly, it just gets in the way of making progress. So the whole two pizza team concept uh, that I think Jeff Bezos came up with it going back a long time now, almost uh, 10 years, uh, was much more about autonomy and giving responsibility across the board. But what we are realizing now is by having the right underlying abstractions, underlying platforms, underlying frameworks, you can actually get a lot done now with, with three people, four people, five people. You know, you don't need 10, 20 people to get something done. Uh, and, and modularity matters a lot, uh, organizing the systems and structures underneath so that we can do that safely and securely. Microservices, domain-driven design, all these uh, modern architectural approaches are all about enabling, improving the, the operational behavior of a team and, and really may, allowing it to be as lean as you can be. And then the lean, leaner the meaner, really, in every sense. 
Exactly. And I think the, the another angle to this is uh, uh, after pandemic, a lot of people coming back to office, but still uh, there are remote uh, workforces as well as people are traveling frequently. Uh, so how we can uh, get uh, pr- like a productive output uh, with uh, remote teams also linked with this, like if we have the uh, correct platform, then uh, we can get everybody uh, like uh, collaborating, sharing, and then uh, adhering to the same governance model and provide the uh, necessary outcomes. So the last but not least, the uh, the fifth point is about the cost, uh, because when it comes to building a platform, uh, if the organization is uh, planning to use a cloud platform, there is no hardware cost. But in case if they are planning to build it uh, on their own data center, then there's a hardware cost. Uh, but uh, even if the organization using a cloud platform, there's a um, HR cost, right? Because uh, you need to invest in a bigger team, as we explained in the previous point. So that's... Uh, uh, going against the current trends of uh, moving from a uh, capex model into a opex model so this is another thing that uh, we have to consider before getting into the business of building a platform yeah i, I think the the financial aspect is very important uh, you know asanka we've had multiple customers we know who've spent usually one to two years putting together the foundational layer of the platform uh, you know, everything from getting everybody to agree to these are the tools we're going to use, getting them all integrated, get them all set up and setting up their own maintenance cycles and update cycles and so on. Um, and literally you spend, you know, 10 people working on it for a year or two or sometimes even more uh, in terms of number of people. And that's millions of dollars that you spend building um, th- this platform. And in the end, you feel good as a technical person, as architects, we love to go down below the hood and see what's going on and, and improve. But from a business point of view, if you look at the, the CEO, the board, uh, the business units that want things done, it delivers zero value. The platform itself, right? It is what's on top that brings the value. And yet you've spent all this money and all this time investing into building something that uh, you know and then and and then you are at risk of getting cancelled we have we have we have history multiple times we have this happen with our customers we had one customer i'm not going to name them a uh, very large global business uh, they spent uh, i think about three years and they had like a very large team they spent tens of millions of dollars building a really brilliant wonderful powerful visionary platform but it took them so long that the project got cancelled. Exactly. And so I think sometimes the... Sure. Yeah. And the, sometimes the organization only uh, count the uh, cost for building. But that's a maintenance cost as well, right? Yeah. Uh, because you need to do the upgrades, patching, yeah. and then yeah. uh, make the tie available. So there's a huge hidden cost uh, when it comes to the maintenance that uh, uh, most of the organizations are not realizing that yeah. part of the story. Again, I think looking at email is a good analogy because keeping an email system up and, up and running in a company uh, is a lot of work. Uh, it's a day-to-day battle, right? Staying ahead of all the, the security challenges. Same thing here. Uh, software is being attacked every day. And, you know, we, we uh, in our platform in Korea, which is our SaaS platform, we, we uh, push production updates every day. Right. Exactly. And that's our job because that's our that's our focus. But for a vendor to uh, for all customers to have to do that, that's a whole different uh, a whole different problem, right? Yeah, so. and the responsibility is huge because you have to keep the system up and running. It's affecting the developer productivity when it comes to the uh, development uh, lifecycle, and then uh, it's affecting the uh, consumers uh, when it comes to the runtime aspect of it. So. It's not easy. So we, the organization need to consider all this stuff uh, uh, before getting into building a platform. Yeah, I, I, think, I think if you try to you know, wrap it all up into you know, what's the point, the, the point is um, uh, we all accept that we need platform engineering and we need a platform. Nobody should be doing things manually anymore. You need automation end-to-end. You need self-service. You need empowerment. You need all of that. 
Um, but building a platform is, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of complex complexity in building and operating a platform forever because it's a, it's a you know it's it's a, it's a marriage, right? You can't leave it. It's not like it's not a one night stand. You don't do it and you're not done with it. You keep on going with it and it never finishes, right? And really comes down to what is the purpose of the business? You know, why are you here as a business? You're not here to build platforms. You know, your, your, your core of the business is what you need to focus on, not all the context, right? This is, and, and that's really what it's about, saying do what you need to do, which is create awesome business capabilities, awesome business digital services, business experiences, all of that stuff, not set up a pipeline. Exactly. I think uh, it was a great conversation and we covered a lot about the uh, complexity challenges uh, when it comes to building platforms and uh, any organizations who's uh, planning to do that, I think better consider this stuff before getting there. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah. we should add, I mean, there, there are always, you know, scenarios where it is the right thing for you to do. Yes. Right? There is no, one of the principles of our podcast is it's a middle path approach, right? And, and there is no one size fits all in the world. Uh, certain certain organizations, certain setups, certain environments, the right thing to do is go build everything by yourself, right? If you want complete control and independence, that's what you have to do. Uh, but for 80%, 90% of the people, you know, you're solving other people's problems, at some point, you got to say, why am I doing it? Yeah. I think the digital native companies, they did that and they could afford it, but yeah. not everybody, right? And especially, you know, digital native companies and, digi and, and born digital companies, it's much yeah. easier yeah. because you, you don't have a whole lot of legacy to move forward. But uh, for most others, spending the time and finding the people, keeping them, all, all this is just completely waste of time. Great. I think uh, that's it for the day. And uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, the podcast. And we'll come up with another interesting topic uh, during our next episode. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Nice. Bye.